Hey everyone, my name is Harmony Dasha, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, web security concepts, specifically how you can learn attack and defense with an application called NodeGo. So very quickly, what I'm going to cover today is I'm first going to give a quick spiel on why exactly you should care about web application security. And then I'm going to go into what is NodeGo and why it's a great tool to learn um, both attack and defense concepts. And then I'm going to just go through a quick demo with one uh, vulnerability that's in NodeGo that you can learn about. So first of all, why should you care about web security? Well, hopefully you already care about it to a degree, but I just wanted to throw this graph out there that um, Verizon put out with a data breach investigation report they did, and they found that in 2015, um, about 40% of data breach cases were from web, app web application attacks. So that's a pretty scary statistic. And not only can web, at web attacks result in data breaches, but um, compromised sites can also be utilized for other evil things that you don't want your site to be used for. For example, a compromised site can distribute malware. It can be utilized for DDoS attacks. Like if your server gets taken over, it can be used as a bot in those attacks. And it can also be utilized in phishing campaigns. So if they find a vulnerability there, they could maybe pretend that they are your site and attack other users. So in order to overcome all this badness out there, what is a first step that you can do? Well, first of all, start thinking like a hacker because you can't beat the hackers if you don't know what kinds of attacks that they're going to try. And it's going to be easier to find and fix those vulnerabilities if you yourself know what those vulnerabilities are, what they look like, and how you can test them yourself. So you don't want to have to like bring someone else in to test your application constantly. You want to be able to find and fix these things yourself. And a disclaimer, don't be evil. So even though you should be thinking like a hacker, make sure you're using these skills to test your own application. Or if you're going to go out there and test other applications, make sure you always, always get permission. Um, and also, if you do find vulnerabilities, don't do evil things. Use, use this knowledge for the power of good and fix these things. So NodeGo, what is it? Well, it's a tool that's going to ha start helping you think like a hacker. So um, it was created by OWASP, which is an organization called the Open Web Application Security Project. And they're a big authority on uh, what you know definitions of web, vulnerab web vulnerabilities are. And also, every few years, they come out with a top 10 list of what the most common web application vulnerabilities are. And NodeGo is an application that they created. Um, it's open source, and it was purposely designed to be vulnerable so that you could practice um, attacking it. And also, since it's open source, you have the code, and you can also practice going in and fixing those vulnerabilities that you find. So I'm going to do a quick walkthrough just so you kind of have an idea of what this application looks like before I do a quick demo later. So this is NodeGo. It's basically made to look like a fake retirement application. So you can actually uh, make an account, and then you can sign in. And there's like a few different areas in the application that you can look at. Um, I'll let you explore this yourself when you're doing testing, if you choose to take a look at this. But I want to point out that once you log in, you have a profile that you can edit. So you can edit your name, your social security number, your date of birth, and your bank account and routing number that your retirement benefits are going to go into. And there's also one other area of the application um, there is an admin page that I will show you quickly. And the admin page is really simple. It just shows you a list of benefits start date for the employees in there. So that's what NodeGoat looks like. It's um, a pretty simple application. 
And in order to show you how you can use this application, how to learn about, to learn about vulnerabilities, I'm actually going to walk through one vulnerability that exists in this application and how you can learn how to fix it. So uh, cross-site request forgery is a very common web application vulnerability. It's also known as uh, CSRF or just CSRF. And the official OWASP definition is, it is, it's an attack that occurs when malicious website, email, blog, basically wherever someone can click on a link, um, causes the user's web browser to perform an unwanted action on a trusted site. And this is the key that the user is currently authenticated. So an example of this would look like something like this. So there's three parties involved and you have a victim, the target web server, and an attacker. And so what usually happens is a, a victim authenticates to a trusted site and they get a cookie back with a session ID in it. But let's say the attacker knows that this site has a CSERF vulnerability in there. I think a classic example of CSERF is a malicious bank account transfer. So they know there's a CSERF vulnerability, so what they're going to do is create, say, a post form with some hidden fields that are going to send a request that change the um, account, and they're going to make the receiver account be their own evil attacker's account, and they're going to transfer $5,000. So somehow they get the user to visit a site with this hidden post form. And because the victim is currently logged into that site, they're going to post that request. And because the browser remembers the user's session, it's also going to send that user's session ID automatically with that request. And the server is going to see that, say the ses session ID is correct, and it's going to go come back and say, OK, it looks good. So that goes through, and the attacker gets a bunch of money. So now I'm going to demo really quick what that would look like inside of NodeGoat. So I'm going to log back in here as a regular user. And I just want you to note that currently my bank account number is a bunch of ones and my routing number is a bunch of zeros. So I'm browsing the internet as a regular user and say I find a website with this ad. I'm about to win a brand new iPhone, amazing. <laughs> Obviously I want that. So <laughs> I'm going to click this button and nothing seems to happen as a user. I mean, you can notice it loads something, but you know, you can't really see anything happening. Um, but in the background, since I was already authenticated to this target website, if I refresh this page now, you're going to see that the attacker successfully changed my bank account number and bank routing number. Um, that's pretty bad. And if you see, if we take a look at this button, what was actually happening in here was that when you hit this, it posts with the, these hidden form values, submitting their bank and router information, et cetera. So what can we do to fix this? Well, that is something that NodeGoat is going to help you with. So once you have an instance of NodeGoat, you can actually go in there and just go to slash tutorial. And they're going to walk you through the top 10 OS vulnerabilities. They make it super easy to read about each of these things. And also, they give you advice for how to fix these issues. So we can go into the section for CSERF. And it's actually going to give you a description. Um, you can watch a video there of exactly how to do the attack. That's incredibly useful for when you're learning these things. And they even include some exploit code if you, say, want to make your own malicious uh, CSERF example. Um, and then if you go down, they offer some advice on how to prevent it and even some source code examples. So this is an awesome tool to learn how to do these things. Um, and 
If you look in the uh, source code, the way I would fix this personally is to enable CSERF tokens. So you can actually put in express middleware called CSERF. And if I were to enable this and also um, turn it on here near the bottom, this is something that would fix this issue. So what CSERF tokens do is they make sure that the user intended to submit those actions by generating a random token on the page before that request is submitted. So when they hit post, it's not just going to post the form data, but it's also going to post another hidden field with this randomly generated CSERF token. And the server is going to go in and match and make sure those tokens exist. So if you were an attacker, you wouldn't have access to that CSERF token because it's going to be randomly generated every single time. So that's one example of how you can use NodeGoat to learn about various vulnerabilities. I'm not going to give away any more things inside this application because I think part of the fun is finding them yourself and like kind of digging in there and seeing different ways you could break it so that you could then figure out how to fix it. And that's all I have for you. So I hope uh, that was useful. And when the slides are distributed, I also have some other resources for other vulnerable applications that um, are good to practice on if you want to explore this topic any further. Um, thanks for listening.